In this video, I'm going to model 1,000 balloons inside Revit. Now, I'm not promising that you guys are going to learn any kind of plumbing in this video, but I do promise you that modeling balloons is going to teach you a lot about this program we call Revit. Now, I'm MEP Guy, and this is Modeling Balloons in Revit. So I have a new project open and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go up to file and we're going to create a new family. We'll just open up an English Imperial and I'm just going to use a generic model because we're making something generic. Now I thought about this a little bit. How I'm going to create this balloon is I'm going to use a semicircle. So I'm going to go up to revolve and I'm just going to create a circle and this is going to be the thing that gets revolved. And so let's just go ahead and make it, I don't know, one foot. That looks good. Now when we try to revolve this thing, so this is what I'm revolving. If I choose an axis line, I can just choose this or I can draw it. So I'm going to choose this reference plane right here. And when we try to finish it, it's going to say the profile must not cross an axis revolution. So what the heck does that mean? Well, I think it means that we need to cut this thing in half. So let's cut it in half. So let's start from here to here. And then this is a little trick. Anytime you're trying to cut a circle, it's kind of, it's not very intuitive. So I'm going to use the trim command. So I'm going to go up here to use trim and you have to select the outside and then this inside piece. And then you select this inside piece and this outside piece. And that will give you this moon shape or semicircle. So now, and you can see over here, this is the angle of rotation. So if I want that full circle, I need to do, do a full 360 degrees. So we're going to finish it off. And that is my balloon. Now let's take a look at it in a 3D view. So I'm going to go down to 3D views, view one, and it doesn't look like much. So maybe we'll do shaded. And there you go. You can see it looks like a balloon. It's just a sphere. Now I want to control the, you know, the diameter of this balloon so I can change it for different sizes inside my model. So what I have to do is I have to put a parameter on that, uh, that semicircle. So let's just click it and we're going to edit the revolve and it's gonna ask us which floor plan or which view we wanna go in to make the edits. We can select any one, and you can see we're gonna edit this little half moon. So I wanna edit this diameter right here. So all I have to do is create a dimension right here, and that will create this little radius dimension. And then let's click on the radius dimension, and we're gonna add a new parameter up here. And we're gonna call this the balloon diameter. We'll hit okay. And now we can control the size of that. It's always a good idea to, once you do that, to go ahead and try out a different size to make sure everything stretches okay. So that looks good. We'll just undo that because I want it one foot for now. We'll click finish. And now I can change the size of my balloon. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to make a little string for this guy. So we're going to use a different thing. We're going to go up to create. And this time I'm going to use the sweep. So we'll start drawing a sweep and I'm going to sketch the path. We'll just use this spline right here and it's not letting me select the bottom here for some reason but that's okay i'm just gonna go near it we'll click a point and then we'll kind of just you know go wavy a little bit just like a balloon would do something like this looks good click escape to finish it off and we'll click finish and then we have to edit the profile so i'm going to go to edit profile and again, Revit's going to ask which plane we want to work in. Now, I just realized I don't want to, I didn't want to have drawn this in the reference level because that would make the balloon on its side. So I actually have to undo all this and we're just going to exit out of this. We'll hit yes to discard it. And I actually need to be looking at this from the front. And that way my balloon is vertical. So let's redo that. Let's create a new um, sweep. And I'm going to do the same thing, sketch path, use the spline, go close to the bottom here, go off like that, go off like that, and we'll finish this thing off just like that. And you can always select it and kind of play with it a little bit more, maybe something like that to give a nice balloon effect. So again, we'll click the finish button and we're going to edit our profile. And this time we can edit the profile in the reference level, hit open view. And now I'm just going to make a tiny little circle, something like that. Hit finish. And now let's uh, finish this off and let's take a look at this from our 3D view, view one. And as you can see, we have our balloon right here. So that's great, but I want to color this balloon. So actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to join this geometry. 
something you might want to do when you're modeling. So we can just join it by clicking the join button and selecting the string and the balloon. And now they are joined as one. Okay, so that's fine. We didn't really have to do that, but I did it anyway. So now I want to be able to color this balloon and I've never done this before, so bear with me. I don't even know if I'm doing it right. We're going to add a material on it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and first I'm gonna create a parameter and this parameter is gonna be called color. Actually, we gotta create a new one right here. We'll call it color. And since I clicked on this button or right here, it will know to group the parameter under finishes and the type of parameter will automatically be material since I clicked that button. Click OK, click color, OK. And now when we go up to our types, you can see we have balloon diameter and we have color up here. Now if we click on that, so the first one I want to make is a blue balloon. OK, so now I'm going to use the, a blue color. So I'm going to create or click this button. I'm just going to start with the default and we'll go to appearances and we can use this blue color up here, but that doesn't really look like a balloon. So we have to maybe add some reflectivity to it. I have no idea. That looks fine, I guess. And then maybe some transparency, maybe use this water. I think that looks fine. So we'll, we'll hit OK. I think we actually have to go to graphics and we have to use the render appearance right here for the shading. So we'll click OK on that. And now this one is called default. So I'm going to click that again and let's rename default and we'll rename that as blue and we'll click OK. And actually I'm going to duplicate that. So I'm just going to right click and we're gonna duplicate the material and the assets. And we're gonna name this one orange. And then what we'll do is we'll just go to appearance and we'll just change this to an orange color. Maybe something a little brighter. So this one's orange, click okay. And now we have the blue, so we wanna make sure this one's now on blue. Hit okay. And then we're gonna create a new one. And this is gonna be our orange balloon. And we're going to change the color of the orange balloon to orange. And for some reason, it displays it as blue here. So I don't really know what it's doing there, but we're going to we're going to go with it. I'm going to click OK. So now I have an orange and a blue balloon and I have a parameter for the diameter that I can change. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see, I have the orange one right here. Let's make sure the blue one works. Click blue and apply it. Yep, it works. So I'm going to click OK. And now we are going to load this in our project and have a little fun. So let's load it in. Now it's called Family 2, so I could rename that as Balloon, but we'll just we'll just stick to Family 2. Load into our project. And now I can place my balloon on the floor plan, just like that. Now I wanna look at this in a 3D view. So I've shown you guys some techniques. Now, actually one thing that I'm gonna mention here is since this is a generic model, I can't select it. And that's because my discipline is set to plumbing. So if I change this to, I don't know, coordination, now I can select it. Okay, so if you guys ever have that issue, generic models, I believe, don't kind of are like underlays when, when this is set to plumbing. Okay, so I change that. So let's go um, to a 3D uh, view. So I can just go up to view, hit the house right here, and it'll create a default 3D view. And as you can see, there's my little balloon, and it looks pretty good, but it's like black and white. So I have to actually change this maybe to shaded. And now you can see I have my blue balloon. So let's click on it. And you can see it is in fact blue. And I can go ahead and hold my control key and I can just drag another one. And maybe this, I make the orange. Ooh, it's showing up as red. That's not good. So maybe we'll edit the type. And we can see orange is on here. So let's try to change that. Oh, you can see for some reason it did not bring the color in correctly. So let's actually just make make a change here and we're going to use the render appearance and there you go now it's orange now i'm just going to duplicate these and kind of throw them all over the place we'll just select this guy right here Ooh, hold control hold control and i don't even know where these are going guys so but i'm just gonna try to make a little display here and then let's do one more blue here Something like that looks good. So let's actually uh, zoom around here and they're all at the same level. So maybe we uh, wanna look at this in a section. 
so or, or an elevation view so let's go to the elevation view you can go to plumbing that's fine elevations let's look at it from the south and we have these balloons and again i have to change the discipline to coordination and again we can change this to shaded and i'm going to move just using my keyboard we're going to move some up and some down just like this we're going to move this one down and we'll move this one down move this one over move this one over just like that i think that looks pretty good so now we'll go to our floor plan so let's go back to one plumbing right here and we're going to use the shaded view and I'm just going to go ahead and hold control again and we're just going to copy these all over the place. Okay, just like that. Just like that. And now I'm going to select some. We're going to go back to the south plumbing view and I'm just going to use my tab key to make some go a little higher. Just select some in here. And this is kind of like an art, you know. This is art, guys. And we're going to go back. I'm totally doing this on the whim, so I hope you guys are enjoying this. This is funny. And then I'm just going to copy some more using control. And now I have a lot of balloons. So I want to be able to count these real quick. So actually, Revit does a good job of counting things. All we have to do is select it. Look at that. I have 57. Okay. So we need 1,000. So I'm going to hold control again. And we're just going to throw some over here. And Revit hopefully doesn't crash on me. So I'm going to throw some over here. And I'm going to throw, we're going to hold control again. Maybe I shouldn't be holding control because my model looks like it's going to break. So let's copy it this time. Yeah, see how the copy tool works a little better? It probably has to do with the graphics. And so uh, here we go, guys. We're just making balloons. All right. So I don't want these little markers actually. Yeah, so I'm gonna hide them in my view. You guys have seen me do that. And let's see how many balloons we have. So 798. So what do we need? 202. Oh my God, guys, I almost just crashed. So we need 200 more balloons. Let's just select some over here. So I have 155. So we just need to select 55 more. We'll just control, select some. We have 189. Revit's going to crash on me, guys. And then let's hold control and we'll select a little bit more. Oh, we have 199. So we need what? 202. So we need four more. So let's zoom in, hold control, select those four. We selected too many. I don't know how to add. We'll hold shift and deselect one. Now we have 202. So let's actually go to our south plumbing with those selected. And there they are, we'll zoom out. And we're just gonna copy these. And we're just gonna copy them up over here and click. We'll hit escape. And Revit's definitely gonna crash on me, guys. So I'm going to go to a 3D view. We'll zoom out a little bit. And that is how you create a thousand balloons inside of Revit. So the last thing I want to show you guys is something kind of cool and I almost forgot to show you. So remember we made that uh, diameter parameter inside the family. So I'm going to go ahead and edit the type and we're going to create a new type. I'm going to duplicate it, just name it blue2. And for the blue2, we'll make the diameter two feet. And now you can see my balloon gets two feet, which is twice as big. So now I want to select a random amount of these. And the way we can do that is we can schedule them real quick. So I'm going to schedule and we're gonna use generic model. We're gonna click OK. And I did a little research on this slash just messing around. And you can use this GUID. And that's like a unique thing to each family. So when we create it, you can see these are all unique letters and numbers. So now we can filter those. So let's just filter them. And we're gonna use that parameter. And we're gonna say contains, I don't know, X. And then it highlights or it filters all the ones that have X in the name. So then we can select them all, go back to our 3D view. And you can see a random bunch are selected now. So hopefully Revit doesn't crash. And we'll click on our family drop down and we'll just change those to blue too. And now you can see we have some random blue balloons that are now two feet. So those are really cool things and uh, tips and tricks for you know creating families, especially balloons inside your model. 
So I really want to thank you guys. It's been a really fun nine months, give or take, of making videos for you guys. And I really appreciate all the comments and all the feedback you guys give me. If you do want to support me, you can go to my website, mepguy.com, and check out my Plumbing 101 course where I go over a complete plumbing design from start to finish from scratch. And make sure to check out next week where I'll be launching MEP Guy custom plumbing fixtures. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy my custom plumbing fixtures, so make sure to look out for those. So I'll see you guys later. See you in the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.